Brendan Carrot of Media Matters shared a clip from Tucker Carlson's program where he was speaking with fellow right-wing commentator Jesse Kelly, and what they say in this clip is shocking. I genuinely cannot believe that they admitted to this. And look, Tucker Carlson is one of the many Fox News hosts that says egregious things and just admits things that you wouldn't expect them to admit. But in this clip, they're shockingly going to admit that the GOP base is going to go more extreme, assuming things don't change within the country. Things being, you know, general things that they don't like. The fact that Hunter Biden didn't get into trouble for the laptop. The fact that Trump was raided by the FBI. Just general grievances that the right has with the United States and the Democratic Party and the deep state and the establishment, yada, yada, yada. But what they say here, it's shocking. Let's watch. I think you make a really solid point about the sadness and the powerlessness that people feel in the face of this. And at some point, people are going to say, why should I follow the rules? Why should I be a good citizen if they don't have to follow the rules? I mean, things kind of break down at some point, don't they? Well, they will break down. They are breaking down, Tucker. I I've said this before, and I'm telling you, I'm, I'm worried that I'm right. The right is going to pick a fascist within 10 to 20 years because right. they're not going That's to right. be the only, one, the only ones on the outs. There's 60, 70 million of us. We're not a tiny minority. And if we're going to be all treated like criminals and all subject to every single law while Antifa Black Lives Matter guys go free and Hunter Biden goes free, then the right's going to take drastic measures. And it's not about Hunter Biden and his drug use. Nobody cares that guy was bumping booger sugar exactly. lines off European hookers on the weekend. It's about justice that he's never held accountable for, and none of the Bidens are, but you would be, Tucker, and so would I. That's so well put, and you're absolutely right. We're moving toward actual extremism because they're undermining the system that kept extremism at bay, and I, I don't think we can say that enough. I'm so glad that you just said it. They straight up just said it. They're just admitting, yeah, you know, I hope that they don't, but the right, they're going to pick a real fascist, maybe in 10, 20 years. First of all, too late, they already did. But the implication is that if they're going to pick somebody who's an actual fascist, assuming that they believe Trump is not a fascist, which he is, but what they're saying is they're going to pick somebody demonstrably worse, demonstrably more authoritarian than Donald Trump if they don't get their way. And Tucker Carlson agreed with everything that Jesse Kelly said. And Jesse Kelly added that the right is going to take drastic measures that's what he said verbatim if things don't change tucker carlson said we're moving towards actual extremism because they're undermining the system that kept extremism at bay first of all that's projection second of all think about what he's telling his audience here his audience is being told that in the event they do become fascist they don't have to beat themselves up about that because it's not really their fault it's the left's fault it's you know the democratic party's fault because they're the ones who pushed them into this predicament they've been backed into a corner therefore if they become full-blown fascists that's justified not because of them but because of what's happening to them because they are the victims according to tucker carlson to admit this is insane. And just think about this for a minute. Ask yourself this question. Would you caucus with a group of people who you felt would turn to actual violence in 10 to 20 years? As a leftist, if I felt as if the left would become increasingly violent within the next decade or two, I would think maybe this group isn't for me. Maybe I, I can't associate with them. But they're just like, yeah, our base is going to go in this direction if we don't get what we want. That is horrifying. And this is a sign that if you haven't been taking fascism and the threat that it poses to U.S. democracy seriously, this should be your wake-up call. They're admitting it. Yes, our base is going to pick a fascist. Like, you usually get pushback from the right when you tell them that most of the Republican Party has gone full fascist. Not all of them. Some of them are just regular conservatives many of them are still proto-fascists but when you tell them that the right has gone fascist they'll push back and they'll say that's not accurate in fact there was pushback after biden said that the republican party has gone semi-fascist now i don't agree with that because i think that they've gone full fascist for the most part but there was still some pushback but now what we're seeing is them just kind of embracing yeah this is kind of our trajectory that should horrify everyone now the reason why this is happening is because of the leaders 
who they still look up to and deify and how they just have no respect for democracy and the rule of law. Take Trump, for example. He just tweeted this out on Truth Social. So now it comes out conclusively that the FBI buried the Hunter Biden laptop story before the election, knowing that if they didn't, Trump would have easily won the 2020 presidential election. This is massive fraud and election interference at a level never seen before in our country. Remedy, declare the rightful winner... Or, and this would be the minimal solution, declare the 2020 election irreparably compromised and have a new election immediately. So it's Trump. It's stupid. But let's dissect that because what he's saying here is important. So first of all, he's claiming now that it wasn't necessarily the voter machines and fraud in that way that led to him losing. It's the FBI supposedly burying, uh, burying the Hunter Biden story. First of all, I don't give a fuck about the Hunter Biden story. Throw Hunter Biden in jail for all I care. OK, this is not something that would have led to Trump winning. It just I'm sorry, it wouldn't have Trump lost in 2020 because of the political context within that time. He mishandled COVID-19. He mishandled the Black Lives Matter protests, didn't meet the moment, further fanned the flame. So there's a plethora of reasons why he lost, but not having Hunter Biden exposed is not one of them. Now, regardless of how you feel about that story, think about what he's calling for. He wants to be declared the rightful winner or have the election redone. What he's calling for is the things that dictators do. Nope, there was fraud. So... I'm the rightful winner. Therefore, I will remain in power. And so this is the individual who the GOP base looks up to, who they deify. So when Tucker Carlson and Jesse Kelly admit that the GOP base is going full fascist within 10 to 20 years, I actually agree with them. But you think that they wouldn't want to admit this. But the fact that they're willing to admit this, well, if you read the subtext, it tells us that they're kind of giving the base permission. Because again, think about what message that sends. Oh, okay. Well, I guess, yeah, this is kind of the trajectory and I don't have to blame myself for becoming a full blown fascist because the Democrats made me do it. Scary shit here. Now it gets worse when you consider the GOP base and Trump voters in particular, their view of whether or not a civil war is likely. Now, Philip Bump of the Washington Post responded to that Trump tweet saying this should be considered in the context of a disconcerting new poll finding released by YouGov. Four in 10 Americans think that a civil war may be likely within the next decade. Among those who say they voted for Trump in 2020, it's more than 50 percent, a group that also expects political violence to increase a lot over the coming years. Now, let's look at those polls. So as you can see, the YouGov Economist poll confirms Trump voters do disproportionately view civil war as somewhat or very likely, although this doesn't necessarily mean that they want civil war per se, but perhaps they view it as an inevitability if Trump continues to get, quote, cheated or something. Now, going to graphic two here, most voters do view political division as increasing by a lot, but especially Trump voters. So Democrats and Biden voters, they are slightly more optimistic, but, you know, I personally am not division in my opinion will increase so long as trump's lies continue and extremism dominates the gop so i don't necessarily think that you know an answer to this question indicates that you support extremism it just means that you look at the context you look at the current state of the u.s and yeah it's obviously likely now finally looking at graphic three here Voters mostly expect political violence to increase a lot over the next few years. Now, with that in mind, Philip Bump adds, we should stipulate that discussion of civil war is very different from any actual conflict. In fact, experts on civil conflict believe that a full on armed conflict between political groups is unlikely for a variety of reasons and that political violence might instead manifest as sporadic flare ups. Now, I actually agree with that analysis. I can't necessarily at this point in time envision a state in America where we're seeing a full blown civil war. I think that flare ups are most likely or in the event the GOP, you know, Donald Trump comes to power, you see a lot more subjugation of his political opponents, uh, turning them into second class citizens, continuing to, you know, further marginalized uh, already, uh, you know, disadvantaged groups, something of that nature, but not necessarily full blown civil war at this date and time that can change, of course. But still, like even if this best case scenario with regard to a civil war comes to fruition, you know, these sort of 
flare-ups are still detrimental to democracy. I mean, look at Tunisia. They saw political assassinations happening at alarming rates, and their democracy now has effectively been completely dismantled. However, the caveat is that newly democratized regimes like Tunisia, they do struggle to consolidate democracy and build up institutional legitimacy, so it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one comparison to the United States. But still, I think that most political scientists would agree that increasing political violence, even flare-ups, is a worrying sign for long-term political stability, and it is detrimental to democracy overall. And now Tucker Carlson and Jesse Kelly, they're saying, yeah, I, I think it's accurate to predict that the right is going to pick a full-blown fascist. Now, if they admit that their side is likely going to pick a full-blown fascist, they are in positions of influence and power, right? Tucker Carlson is the most popular news host in America. I don't know how popular Jesse Kelly is, but Tucker Carlson sh certainly has a giant platform. Wouldn't he think, okay, if this is happening, well, I have to really pay close attention to my rhetoric and make sure that I'm not fanning the flames, but he's not doing that. And ask yourself, why is he not doing this? Well, it's because he doesn't want to. He thinks that the GOP picking a full-blown fascist perhaps is good. Maybe he one day wants to be the full-blown fascist that they pick. So I don't necessarily see this as a prediction from Tucker Carlson and Jesse Kelly. Uh, I see this as a threat. A threat that, hey, if you don't do what we want, we will go further to the right. And that should horrify absolutely everyone because we've been warning you many people myself others have been saying the gop is becoming full-blown fascist for a while now and we're reaching a point where the popular the most popular news broadcaster in america is kind of just not even pushing back against that and saying yeah my side might go full fascist and they'd be justified to do that that's a really worrying sign and i hope that people take this seriously because this is a warning sign that things are going to get a lot worse in the United States if the GOP does not fight against extremist elements within their own party. That requires courage, however, and we know that GOP leaders just don't have that. So unfortunately, Tucker Carlson and Jesse Kelly may be right. They may get what they likely want. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.